This was a picture that a professional photographer, daughter of a friend of mine, took a bunch of pictures of me and she went home and entered a contest and won oh. first prize. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. And her first, first uh, entry. Um, cool. In 1896, they, they discovered placer mines in Grub State Gulch up here. The Spains that you're going to see, uh, the grandson, still mine up there. And uh, then soon after, by 1906, they found the veins of gold, hard rock mining. And uh, that they, all the mines were able to operate up until the war. And then they needed the men for the war effort, World War II. And uh, they closed down all the mines except for one, and that was Independence Mine. And uh, it was allowed to stay open because they had tungsten as a byproduct of gold uh -huh. and tungsten is for the light bulbs yeah so they were able to keep mining their gold and finding tungsten hmm. at the same time we were up at independence mine that's a great place to visit yep we stayed yeah. at palmer for a week and we were up in hatcher's pass in independence mine. yeah it's mm -hmm. a lot more spectacular in fall colors it's got a dull, dull colors right now yeah, yeah. but uh we're putting identification of, of uh, who donated all these things, Victrola, from <coughs> it's still working condition. Oh, we wow. We play it from time to time. And uh, cool. these figurines were uh, up at the gas station up at the top of the hill. Oh. And, uh, uh, this one's drying out because of it's in here in a heated room and it's never enjoyed the heat before. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> Cool. Uh, there's, uh, we have a lot more pictures and we have all the written history of the mining up there. And it wasn't all tunnels. They had tunnels and they'd find an ore vein and they'd crawl and chase it until it disappeared. Wow. The Lucky Shot mine, like there in the 30s, uh, they lost it. They couldn't find the, the ore vein because a big shift in the mountain and uh, they chased it around for a long time. Uh, after the war, they came back and not till about 1985, they found it by doing cord drilling on the side of the mountain. And uh, now it's, it has had eight different operators. And you can see up here, that's the tailing pile coming out of the main shaft up above. There's a series of mines all along there and they're collected. There's about 12 to 14 miles of wow. tunnels in wow. that one Dang. and 20, wow. 21 wow. in Independence Mine. Wow. Jeez. I've gone up, this is on this side of the mountain, I've gone up there with the owner of the mine and went in a tunnel and came out at Independence Mine. Oh, <laughs> wow. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, very yeah interesting. wow. Uh, this is the uh, railroad history of Willow and uh, we're, I've just got on the uh, surplus property list but the big thing here is when Harding came to drive the Golden Spike for the railroad he brought his wife but he brought his mistress too <laughs> and she was totally m m mad about it he, she wouldn't know this is the only time they got close enough for a picture and they hadn't finished painting for his getting here so he grabbed a brush and painted that last building hmm. and this is him driving the the train from Wasilla up to here with a security card and the story that wasn't publicized and kept quiet was he drove the spike in Ninana in about 1923 and then went to Fairbanks went back to Seward on the train and went to San Francisco on a steamship where he died from food poisoning. Uh -huh. and imagine that. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> and uh, a gal that my brother is dating, his wife passed away three, four years ago, but she is a tour guide on the railroad and she was telling a group of people on the train that were touring about the situation dying from food poisoning and led on that the, the wife did it. <laughs> and then 
when she got done, a guy came up and says, hello, I'm Dan Harding. I'm great-grandson of President oh, Harding. No. She went into this big, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. He says, no, it's all right. We all know who did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's the rest of the story, yeah. ain't it? Yeah. yeah. And then we're moving into the uh, school in Willow, opened in 1959 with one coincident brought out from the military base. My ex-wife is right there. My past basketball coach was there. That was the center on our basketball team. The boys, two boys were released because they didn't have room for them. There were eight grades in the school, and they sent them to Wasilla, and that's that's how he was on our, I, I graduated from Wasilla. And then uh, the next year they had four Kwanzaa huts. At this time, the population of Willow was just blowing up because all these homesteaders were moving in. Statehood happened, 1959, and uh, they all had big families and they were all poor. So the mines worked out good because they were all abandoned and the homesteaders went up there for repurposing. Ah. That was their lumber yard. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, tore down yeah. buildings and, and built their homes with them. Huh. And there's still a lot of homes here in Willow. Now this, this guy right here, I have pictures in my phone. Last week I was in here working like I usually am and uh, he introduced himself when he came in, he and his wife. He was up here to, to trace his roots. Ah. And because <coughs> they homesteaded right down the road uh, where uh, close to Houston, before you get to Houston. And the wife hated it. <laughs> and, and for good reason, there was no amenities, there wasn't running water, they had to, outhouses and it was rough. It was so rough that another couple, a uh, prominent name in Willow then, they worked through it and they got their land and, and she all the time says, I'm leaving you or where I'm going back to see, to live with, near my parents and family. They proved up on the homestead, stead 160 acres. They traded the homes, homestead for a used pickup truck and left. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. And yeah. this is me restoring <laughs> Willow's first school bus. And this is what the roads were like to get that to that Quonset hut. Wow. They'd have uh, a designated student, the old, oldest one, would drive the bus <laughs> as it was pulled through the mud. They had kept a dozer so that they could uh, get to school. Now is that bus around here somewhere? It's or? on my property back home. Okay. It looks still just about like that. <laughs> uh, re rebuilt the engine. My brother reworked the fenders there. There were pieces missing out of them. He did a good job. We reupholstered. We replaced glass. I replaced the floor in it. And uh, that was 1959. And it was a used bus from uh, Eagle River Chugiak area. Huh. <laughs> now next week, uh, Friday, they'll be, uh, the teachers from the elementary school are coming here for a luncheon that we're putting on to uh, uh, give them free lunch and a tour of the facility because they'll be bringing their uh, students over. And we worked up a 25 uh, numbered list of questions like a treasure hunt, but it's an information hunt that They'll have the questions and they go around and the find answer. the answers. Yeah. Oh, and that's then they'll, they'll cool. yeah. teach about it back at the school. Good. Oh, wow. Yeah, you got to awesome. get them yeah. interested yeah. in it. Pass that history. It doesn't look like that anymore, but I have that on my property. <laughs> it's deteriorated real bad. There's nothing other than the engine, the hydraulics. And the, there was several thousand dollars worth of hydraulic system. It was uh, a tour boat on Nancy Lake for a short while, but we <laughs> shut down because you had to have a captain's license uh, oh. <laughs> to run it. To run passengers. And, yeah. uh, these are some of the people that lived on Nancy books here, uh, where he translated native to English that he had people. They, 
I got my trap line from Shem Pete was in Nancy Lake Recreation Area, but he was there from, he, he lived in Willow for 72 years. Wow. And then at, uh, three times he had to move because his house was on somebody else's property. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, it was all his to begin yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, people would uh, file for a homestead and they'd come and tell him, no, this is my home, and he'd have to move it. Huh. And some of the white people, uh, residents, would help him uh, move his house or build something new for him at a new location. This is right on Nancy Lake here and about him. Mike Ardo came through uh, Seattle in 1948 or 40 and he set up a uh, resort, not a resort, cabins for people that could ride the, the railroad up and get off at Nancy Lake and then they owned land around the lake but there were no roads. So they'd have a boat there or rent some of his and go to their cabins uh, mostly in the summer. And then the people that homesteaded had to stay on, on the land for like three years and before they earned the property. But they also had to try to farm. And the land up here, especially like that, is up and down steep hills and heavily treed. And uh, farming was not in the numbers. Yeah. Yesterday I built a, a shelf for the uh, carved eagle there. Wow. Mm. And uh, that was donated from a friend of mine that passed away not long after he had donated it. Oh, and wow. uh, cool. this set of bears that's right behind you here. Oh, by the way, that's a grizzly bear. Yep. And uh, it is the same size and the same pose as the brown bear right over there. And there's no different, real difference between a brown bear and a grizzly bear other than uh, uh, grizzlies are too far from the ocean, generally, to get salmon. Huh. So, uh, if that brown bear went on a long walk uh, and went beyond where the salmon go, or a designated mileage from the ocean, he'd become a grizzly. <laughs> oh, that's, oh wow. Yeah. Uh, I cut this tree that had gigantic burls yeah. on each side. Oh. and. Uh, brought it out and had a carver carve this bear and on the opposite side this is half the tree the other half is down there and there was another burl on the other side so we got a pair of nice carvings out of one tree wow and uh, that it's all else. it's almost hollow because there were ants in it for a while huh. so, real soft there and uh, if it gets any well the ants are gone now yeah uh, I could take out a panel and carve it and spray foam it, expanding foam. Yeah. And, but nobody should be testing it here to see how <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. yeah, yeah. This is a uh, sled from one of our uh, members that ran the Diderot in uh, 1988. And this is a sled that uh, a friend of mine, well, a friend of my friend worked on the railroad. My friend is 97 years old now, strong, and his, his mind is good, his eyesight's good. Uh, he doesn't hear so good, but he has hearing aids now. And it was uh, a native man made this sled pre Iditarod. There wasn't a, there was a Iditarod trail from when the diphtheria or whatever uh, yeah. it was. He made this sled for Mike Lee, who I worked with with state parks, and he was a school teacher at Willow Elementary and became the first ranger in Nancy Lake State oh. Park. And uh, it's a misspelled a Diderod, but in 1969, and uh, for Mike Lee. Huh. You know, our friend Ryan won it this year. Yes. And we weren't here. This was the first year that first we didn't year come we didn't in March. Come. Here's his granddad's name. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Joe Reddington. Joe Reddington. Yeah. <laughs> so we could have yeah. kicked ourselves. And and for not being here, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this was a trail marker when they used to run from Anchorage out and across the bridges to get out here. Uh, and 
they stopped that soon. This was down by Eklutna, and it was okay. from Carl Huntington in 1974 when it, and uh, 1975, Emmett Peters huh. did. Yeah. Hmm. This is uh, what I was telling you about the... Uh, that is cool. The man that did this has an um, electronic machine computerized that he could punch in for pictures of anything and then put, scoot them on his screen and uh, then turn it on and a router would go across the bottom, like if he's going across the very bottom down there, he'd go to where a leg's going to be up and over and down and up and over for the other leg. That it's three inch foam and he did all of that uh, it only moved about this fast like that and would go eight feet and come back one-eighth of an inch over then when he did the whole thing like that he'd put on a smaller router bit and go over it again one-eighth of an wow. inch at a time oh, wow. and then he painted it after and uh, this moose I've donated a lot of things wow. in here because I've been collecting and interested in history for a long time. This moose I shot while I was sitting in a lawn chair at uh, just on our porch across our lake and, and dropped that one. <laughs> uh, pretty long shot. Uh, and there's been others a lot closer than that that were how, <laughs> by, by how much did that one weigh? Do you know? Uh, oh, I would imagine 1,400 pounds or so. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the elk I got from a Fognac Island. And this is interesting about the muskox. Hunted to extinction by 1930. 34 transplants from Greenland repopulated Alaska with over 4,000 of the shaggy beasts living here today. That's pretty good That's reproduction. Yeah. 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 And now they're a big problem in Nome and other places because they herd up. And I have pictures of uh, uh, a muskox in the middle of a dog team stomping them. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Uh, we went to the muskox farm. Mm -hmm. Down in Palmer. Down in mm -hmm. Palmer. Yep. Yeah. You dress warm? Two weeks of beautiful weather. We have not had a single drop of rain. Not anywhere. We were in Palmer, Seward, no rain, mm -hmm. sunny skies. It's been gorgeous. Until this morning. In Until this morning nice. we had frozen eggs. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, yeah, it's a it's a great time to, of year to come, but not very beautiful. You have to put up with a lot of hunters uh, in the fall when it's all golden and everything. These are mushers in Willow that have run the Adidorod. We will have that full when we do go there, and I'll have to add another board. I just re added another board because we're getting the pictures now of everyone. Uh, three people recently, <coughs> this gal and those two, came and uh, I got their pictures in here. Hmm. Uh, the D.D. Oh. John Rose right there. Yeah. yeah. These, these five people are on the Mushers Hall of Fame here. Uh, and next year this man will probably be voted by <coughs> our, our organization the Adidorod restart starts just outside the windows right there, right over there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We've, uh, we've been to that twice now? Three times. Three times. Uh -huh. Yeah, and walked across, walked across the lake one time in a blizzard. That was 2021. Last time 2021. we stayed over right. here and um, we drove over there and parked and saw them as they came through. That's, yeah. That's easier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easier than walking across the lake. There's Robert Reddington. <clears throat> huh? Yeah. Yeah. Robert. I was happy for him that he could win. There's Norman Vaughn over there. Yeah. He's a famous musher too. Uh, this is the guy that ran the race in uh, 1988. He's in a wheelchair now hmm. and re refuses to stop pushing on. Hmm. Dick Mackey. Yeah. Uh, this was one big room after they refurbished it. It was empty of anything in here. There used to be a stage right here. We were going to put our game animals on that. And these windows, this, this is a, goes right here. This is our door that we only take out. I did some painting in there uh, this morning. 
but uh, they added two bathrooms and mechanical room on the only wall that had didn't have windows on it mm. where we needed to put all the game mounts because they bleach in the sun yeah so uh, I built all the uh, carpentry in here I did myself in the last year and a half I almost lived here <laughs> my wife was was threatening to let me live here <laughs> and, and these posts uh, I made a screw jack out of the top and there's a drilled hole in the log that the bolt can go through with a washer on it uh, and then a nut and as you tighten the nut down that pushes the bolt up and uh, wherever there's a piece of two by four that's because it's in between uh, the bottom quarter of the rafters and uh, we needed to have that wall there I couldn't get over to another place where there there I had to be between the windows and I, I finished this yesterday putting the wood in there these are just shower doors mm. here and the hinge is still on it I got potted at a garage sale <laughs> <laughs> hey, repurpose 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 yes and yeah. uh, I'll show you other things that were something else champion a Diderot racer I mean uh, for a rendezvous racer in 1948 and it was very interesting because his wife uh, Natalie we our homestead our borders theirs and we were closest of neighbors uh, and she was a beautiful woman and had her picture on uh, not life magazine but one of the national publications of, and she with, was with a uh, husky uh, and he saw it and contacted her and says do you want to come to Alaska I'd love to meet you and we can mush together and I have a kennel and yada yada and she moved to Alaska they wound <laughs> up getting married <laughs> wow. but he fell in love with her just seeing her in the, <laughs> in the magazine uh, this is our big event of the year, is the Willow Winter Carnival, and uh, it's been going since 1960, and all the pins, we're only short one or two here, uh, but Natalie, our president, now I was president for 14 years, and was glad to let somebody else run the meetings <laughs> and uh, help with all the things that has to be done. Uh, these we have competitions and there's a big trophy that a guy I don't see it it's here somewhere uh, yeah no that's not it that's for uh, that's Billy back. Sullivan for, for the dog machine candle. anyway for <laughs> wood chopping and uh, axe throwing and uh, cross cut saw men, a man and a woman mixed uh, uh, co-ed and there's like 10 different events and we're uh, we have that every year and he was a long time winner he was about six eight that's his picture right there he looks like a monster oh wow giant wow. Uh, he may some people say seven foot but uh, I'm a basketball coach and I used to know him and he didn't stretch to seven feet <laughs> <laughs> just in the stories uh, there's Mrs. White, my mother-in-law, uh, did the history of Willow in that book right there, and the and featured the capital move to Willow uh, in another one just like it, and that documents everything that I'm saying about the school moving and the library when it started the fire department that she dedicated. Well, that building over there is in her name. Oh, wow. And she dedicated the school when it became a stick frame school with the governor. Huh. Cool. That, that uh, mountain scene right there, that's what you see looking north. You've probably seen it. Uh, Denali, but it was McKinley when that was made, Hunter and Four Acre. And that's what you see north. And here this is what you see if you looked out the window and could see that far. Uh, 
Pioneer Peak, uh, Lazy Mountain, uh, Mananuska uh, Peak, and uh, that's Butte, and this is Lazy Mountain. And, uh, uh, oh, yeah, on my 75th birthday, I climbed back with family, the Butte. Oh. It's a good little climb. Yeah. There's 504 uh, steps, wooden steps, and then a lot, lot more trail that goes up like that. Huh. Cool. And, and we climbed a bluff yesterday. <laughs> All the way to the top of the butte? No, no. no this no. is in. When we stopped at Beluga, Beluga, Beluga Point, Point. Oh, uh -huh. over a week ago, we flew the drone, and the drone went into Clipped the a tree. Line. Clipped a tree. Broke a prop. Broke a prop. And fell. And fell. Up, up about 400, 400 feet up on the cliff. Oh. So we yesterday we went back to these two, recovered it. Yeah. We all four hiked up there, but we didn't go down to where it was. We stayed up on the bluff rock. I fortunately was a, I, I get a, a GPS signal from it. Uh -huh, so I had the yeah. pinpointed yeah. GPS signal. And so we climbed it. We, there was a trail that goes up and then hits, a, hits trail. a trail that goes across and it goes all the way down to Potter's Marsh. But we got up there and then we kind of went over some boulders and went over to where I followed where the GPS was. Scotty found the broken prop first at the base of a little cliff. Yeah. So we scrambled back up that cliff and, and there it was sitting on a bed of moss. Oh my. It was in perfect condition. Hey, great. Yeah. Uh, a side fact is I was the maintenance foreman for Chugach State Park, State Parks. And uh, uh, I'm all over those those mountains and uh, Miku Creek. Uh, we had the biggest windstorm ever that hit Anchorage and I was down at Miku Creek trying to work. I should have known better. But <laughs> it was so bad that I'm sawing like this and I pulled the saw out and it slapped me in the face. Oh, you couldn't fight it. There was lots of damage and everything from that. Uh, but I, lots of stories that worked. I was the uh, man on the equipment to build the trail to flat top. Mountain. Mm -hmm. And the s steps that aren't there anymore, uh, I was foreman on that. The Potter's Marsh, uh, the, uh, the painted, the train that's down there, we painted. Uh, mm. That's a pretty interesting there. Come on, come Everything in this cabinet I donated. Uh, the mining hat with the carbide lamp was a hard one to get. and. Uh, if you see this miner right here, look what's in the background. There. Yeah. It's a good picture and it was pretty good carry. I carried the bear across the creek and put it over there for the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I have another one at home that I set up and used a standing bear that I didn't <laughs> donate it. It's still in, in the house. Uh, the bear's in a position like this, and I leaned it up against a tree and previously put Kathy uh, a ladder up, and she got on this branch up above the bear, and she's yelling with a berry bucket hanging from her neck, and, and she like looks all get, scared. Uh, yeah, and cool. that was the centerpiece for uh, our uh, community calendar. <laughs> Evan Root is uh, from 1933, and it cost $17 when it was new. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I've not seen one at This here yeah. is drill uh, press. Her turn of the century drill press, and if you flip a switch, it'll go down at a very slow rate in proportion to what you crank. Like that. Mm. Oh, cool. And uh, I haven't been promised, but I've been teased by uh, a crank drill press that bolts to track and they have to drill the railroad rail oh, yeah. to bolt them together bolt them to together. keep going and uh, the railroad guy that i was working with uh, he has one that is a hand crank that wow. they strap onto the rail wow and uh there's other things i'm hoping to get from yeah. that yeah uh this gray and rosalie white's uh homestead and uh, the property I'm on is their old homestead, and they have this, not this picture part, but it's yeah. uh, 
to supply water in their house. <laughs> and I own a gravel pit. And now there's a lake right beside the homestead house. The water table's close. If you go down about 10 feet, you hit the water table. I had a contract with them to build the lake and dig a minimum of eight feet into water tables so it'd be a lake. And uh, th they had this, or a pump like this there, and it was, they only lift up to 15 feet. So they got into that table and uh, that lake is just like a well. Huh. But a well is completely covered with gravel and you drill down into it. How do you dig, how, think, how deep do you think this well is here? Uh, 15 or so? Or? No, it's uh, 16 inches. Because it's <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to say it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and sure you didn't dig a well here. Mm -hmm. No, well, it would have been a bad well too because after you pump it into there, it flows back into the well. <laughs> Recycle so, <laughs> Yeah, septic system and pump yeah. system. Yeah, I've got a couple of them there. Uh, Corton candles, they call them. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I don't know if that's what you, you know what, do you know anything about that candle? No. Well, what it oh, is. I've got another story for your museum now. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, ready. Uh, when I bought the first one, I've got like three of them. They said if the, the family that had a daughter, when the boy come over to date him, the mom and dad would light that candle and they would set it to a certain, when it burnt down to a certain point, it was time for him to leave. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to use that. Yeah, I'm that's true. That. Yeah, it's called a courting candle. And, yeah. and you can adjust it, you know. And if you don't like the boy, uh -huh. it's a shorter candle. And then if candle. she ends up pregnant, uh, they forgot to say it. Never <laughs> oh, yeah. Or light it. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Imagine cooking your dinner or baking bread or oh, yeah. in that wow. stove right there. Good the stuff. little box on the left is the fire box. There's a steel wall in between the two, and Mrs. White used to cook yeah. uh, dinners on that. Wow. And that pot on top is a uh, nickel. It, it's made out of nickel. Yeah, I see, still see some of them around in Tennessee. Uh -huh. uh, you have a lot longer history down there than we have. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's Appalachians. Yeah, yeah. 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 When, there were uh, 11 states when Alaska was bought from the Russians. So their flag had 11. That's a 49 star flag that is very, very rare. Uh, some of the big uh, <laughs> museums don't, here in Alaska, don't even have a 49 star flag. Wow. I, I searched for 40 years before I got that one in that good shape. Wow. And then I got into a collection of antique people and collectors. Now I have five. Yeah. I'm monopolizing. Good. <laughs> good. This was just That's brought good. in the other day. I have to take the tape off of this. It was put on to keep the glass from breaking and just made a big mess. Yeah. And we'll put more interesting things in there. in there. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Very cool. You've worked hard on this. <laughs> yeah. No wonder you retired. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's more work being retired. I know, I know. Yeah. This is the knot. That's the, okay, the yeah. burl on the tree wow. that I cut down. Yeah, you don't see too many yeah. like that. Oh, wow. that's that's huge. Yeah, that's the biggest, nicely shaped. I've seen one that was bigger that was just ugly because it was all twisted and everything. But we brought it out with a wrecker. Yeah, and I seen one when we was down in Whittier the other day. When we was, uh, I seen one on a tree down there, and it was kind of low. But I, I, I meant to say something about it there. It's something you don't usually see around home. That big. Yeah, it was yeah. big. That's yeah, that's huge. And then this is the guy that carved them. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a little grant for a you know like fixing up the school bus and and making the signs entering Willow. Uh, cool. Huh. And. My buddy that was then about 85 or so, uh, he and I did all the work to get that, that stuff done. And we have other pictures. That's from when the uh, community uh, building, the new one was built. My father-in-law is dedicated and oh, and there's a picture. Can't see that. That's maybe somebody else. Ah. This one's Dave. <laughs> the geologist. The geologist. That, those are good ore samples. And 
And this, I saw that Northern Lights rock. Yes. That's pretty cool. That is. And it's a, it's an ore bearing rock also. It looks just like a rusty rock. Yeah. It's a very new in the geology world compared to all the other things. It was discovered up in Hatcher Pass hmm. in that same uh, Grub State Gulch. And yeah. There's <coughs> little, right up there this blue green rock you can read it if you like dynamite uh, <laughs> box and this is a newer era miners picture because then everybody was required to wear a mask so there's no beards yeah. uh, here like that so a face can be in it it'll have a hard hat on it it'll have all the clothes of a person I'll I'll cut a, a flat cutout and put, you know, the clothes attached to it down to boots, half boots and half a helmet. And there'll be cut out hole here and here matching up with the shirt. So if a young boy wants to get in there and be seen and filmed on the camera, uh, he can wave his arms and say hi or he can, he can hold a nice picture yeah. or anything like that. Interactive things are, are good for cool. museums. Yeah. To build that cabinet right there, that display and shelves, it costs $7.50. <laughs> because that is the mirror board behind the dresser. Yeah. And I had just attached the plywood to the sides of it, top of it, and bottom of it, put two shelves in it, and that's what you said. That is so cool. Yeah. And, uh, Very cool. Just yesterday, I worked very hard. This was this was in, in this building from the start. It was made so that we could greet people and uh, serve people maybe coffee or hot chocolate or uh, drinks for. To they have some of our people right here in Willow, old timers were married in this building, hmm. and it was the library. It was a school. It was a church. It, it's been all these different things on different days and different eras. And that's Willow Winter Carnival. This was the only building that they had and poor, yeah, poorly insulated, but they'd stick, I've heard fa fables of 150 people in here. Wow. You know, but I don't, I don't <laughs> listen to those things. It's rated for 50 people, which is ridiculous. You could put more, but now with all of our stuff in here, it's, it's, uh, yeah. It's yeah. appropriate, 50 people, it's, it is full. Yeah. 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 Well, we